What's up, everybody? This is Bam Erickson for Power After Buzz TV for season six, episode six, titled Inside Man. Special guest is in the building, Mike Dope Hood. I said it right. Yeah. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Big rich town. Hey, Come on, hit Joe the bow, hey. hey. <laughs> I just come from the poorest part. Hey, Bring the like bars that bright like city lights. I gotta <laughs> make it. This is where it goes down. Whoa. Hey. 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 That's my new. There we go. There we go. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Um, we're back. We have a special guest. This is where you the panel to you to my left. Jill Monroe. What's up, everybody? I'm Robin Ayers. It's your boy, Jimmy V. And he plays the character of Jason Missick. Please welcome to After Buzz, Mike Dope Hood. There you go. <laughs> welcome, welcome. But I will say it's Jason Mitchich. That's right. Mitchich. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. And he's yes. about his money. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, really quick, what do you think about the theme song? Did you uh, did you like the oh, old man. one, the new one? Uh, you don't know how many people called me or would text me <laughs> or email me and say, they've got to change the song. They wow. have to keep the original. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't believe, even my wife was like, it's, it, it doesn't make me like the show as much as it was before. <laughs> wow. No. See? Your wife okay. knows what's up. Yeah. Yeah. She knows what's up. It's set a vibe. I know. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Top of the show, it's revealed that Tariq planned the entire kidding and uh, the kidnapping. Shout out to Robin. Yes. I mean, and uh, you guessed it. You guessed and it. they are gonna split the two million. Are you mm -hmm. shocked Tariq did this? Well, you know what's funny. <sighs> mm -hmm. Remember, it wasn't until the probably the latter part of our episode that this revelation came mm -hmm. that he was pulling this whole thing together. So I think initially I was I would I would have been shocked, but then I think after that revelation, I'm like, why wouldn't he? You know, uh, kind of kind of get this whole thing together, mm -hmm. this whole plan. So yeah, I wasn't shocked. What about you guys? Um, I remember speaking with Michael <laughs> Rainey at the carpet and he specifically said about his character, it's all about himself this season. With that said, I knew he would do some low ball stuff, but I didn't know he he, he would set up his own family. Yeah. So I was, I was hurt, but at the end of the day, <laughs> Tariq is clearly not the character that we've seen. Did you say you were hurt? Well, yes, I was hurt. How he you was hurt? How are you gonna do that to your own parents, man? One, you know. Well, wait goes. till the finale when he kill his daddy. Oh, oh, oh man. Lord, hey, is that what your uh, everybody's man, always being killed? By, by by him. Him. I'm like, what? What happened? Bam <laughs> killed somebody. He killed Dre off three episodes ago. Yep. So you know, he's done killed Tate. I mean, just about yeah. everybody. Bam yeah. has killed off. You haven't been killed off yet. Oh, no. no. He's come, he, he has a he has a date for you though. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> okay, so yeah. so Ghost and Tommy. So after um after it's revealed that that Tariq um and and uh, Vincent set this up, so they're outside and they're talking and. And um, and Tommy says, let's get one thing straight. If I come on board with you, I'm working with you, not for you. Um, and then he reveals, Tommy reveals that he knew that Tariq was tr uh, selling drugs and told him not, not to do it. And then he says, you're right, we're, we're not uh, boys, we're brothers, so I'm asking you, can you help me? Again, the brothers have come up again, and it's it's been this um, roller coaster. This roller co coaster, yeah. and I said something a couple episodes ago about how Kate mentioned raising a black son, and then I thought about it. We don't really know much about ghosts in his past, so this oh, brother so thing is coming up. You're making that connection, yeah, right, they're right, real right, brothers, right. Yeah. Yeah. brothers, real growing up, yeah. not yeah. future or, brothers. They're r real brothers. Okay. Or, or you know, Mrs. Eakin, you know, did raise him, and maybe you know she was with the dad, like a yeah. son. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But something, but something, I feel like is is coming from that. You think it's bigger than just friendship? I have to agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. I do. I. I mean, I know they they grew up together, and I think that's the main thing, and that's where where they're brothers. I don't know if they're blood related, but they're as close to being blood related mm -hmm. as we can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I liked it. Yes. I mean, listen, it's Ghost and Tommy, y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, right, right. I've, We've what, seen what, what is power without Ghost and Tommy? And I understand you have, I mean, it's power. Everybody's going to struggle for the power and, and pull and all of that stuff. But uh, that's why this episode made me feel so good, because mm -hmm. everybody came back that's together. True. You know, you had the, the, the Lakeisha and, and Tasha, but they had to come together. You had Tommy yeah. and Ghost, but they had to come back together. So it felt good, even though it may not last long. Which is a great example of you don't let your emotions get in between when business has to get done which I'm sure you know 
all about getting the business done. That's <laughs> right. Right. And, and, and but one person who does not know how to keep his emotions really quickly is this Tate and Ghost. So after after it's revealed that the two of them are going to start selling drugs and and get the two million within twenty four hours, he goes to Tate and says, "Hey, I need you to loan me a million dollars." And now uh, Rashad Tate is now he's like this child now, where he's pouting all the time. Yes, yes. And for me, it's annoying. I. You know, I, I wish he would have been dead a couple episodes ago, but it is becoming quite annoying. But, I, you know, the one thing that you have to give Ghost is that Ghost knows always he's always in control, even always when ready. he's not in control. And so I just like the fact of how he was like, no, this is what you're going to do. I have the video from Alphonse and you're basically going to do what I'm going to do. And then you see him go to the phone and he makes a call. Mm -hmm. Make some calls. Yeah. yeah. Blackmail. Yeah. 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 No, but you have leverage in order to make moves. Mm -hmm. That's well, all it is. Once again, this is power, right? Speaking of leverage, mm -hmm. now let's go to Jason. No, pronounce it Jason Mitchich. Mitchich. Mitch. Okay, Mitchich. So Tommy brings a check to Jason. Mm -hmm. Jason immediately has red flags. He's asking questions and he plays it cool and he was like, ah, you know, Tommy, you're right. I feel like Jason is too invested. Mm -hmm. Like, who cares? You have $2 million, it's clean. Take your drugs and go. Because <laughs> uh, Tommy says, do you really care as long as you get your yes. money? He's yes. too involved but in Tommy and Ghost. I've I, always felt that way. I, I, I agree, but I... <laughs> because I, he's a psychopath. Yes, I, <laughs> I agree, but I agree with Jason in, in this instance. You have to remember, Tommy is a drug dealer. D uh, Tommy distributes his drug to street to two bit hustlers. You know what I'm saying? So like he's not he's not he's not distributing his drugs to like, you know, using Hollywood or something. But you, you never know. know. Mm -hmm. You never know. Come on. One here's the thing, you never they had to start somewhere. Ghost started at the exact same place Tommy did. Mm -hmm. Then Ghost elevated. He didn't want to use his clubs, but his club. I mean, there's all sorts of things. I don't understand why Jason is so upset if Ghost and Tommy make up. Okay, that I agree with, but I do feel like Jason had a right to question why is he cleaning out his entire warehouse full of drugs because you don't know where the drugs are going to be distributed to. Well, the big thing about that is, you know, if you're selling so much product, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you're asking for triple or quadruple that amount. That raises flags. He's a businessman. Jason's a very smart businessman. He knows what everything is accounted for. So for him, and he's got to answer to himself and to the other powers that be as far as where all this is getting moved and why he has to bring get so much in, so much product in. So I think that's why he questions... Um, questions Tommy because it's it's something completely different. He's just on point. He's always ready for anything. Mm -hmm. Now, for the writing, I felt some type of way because later on in the episode, obviously you step to them for something that's owed. Yes. Why didn't he confront them at that point saying, oh, this check, it should be for what you already owe me. Like, wh why wait until later on? Good question, Jimmy V. Um, because I think he was going to give some time to it, but then he heard through his intel that he has, that's how he knows where everybody is all the time, mm -hmm. um, that Ghost and Tommy are together. And that's mm -hmm. what sets him off. You, you have to understand, he's from day one, he said, I don't want Ghost involved. Mm -hmm. And then Ghost is involved, and he's like, fine, I'll try to deal with it. But then this season, he sort of turned it around saying, wait, let me see if I can use Ghost. But he doesn't want to use them together, per mm -hmm. se. I think well, he likes toying with them. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe part of him does. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> maybe part of Jason uh, enjoys that. Look, he's in a power position. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Yes. Right. And anybody that's in a power position like that, especially in the criminal world, they they don't mind some of that. They have that bravado. They have some of that about them. Mm -hmm. So I think they want you know they want to enforce their power, so to speak, or or the, uh, being able to put their thumb on them. You know. Um, and I think that's one of the big things that that Jason likes to do with them. But he also doesn't like to be lied to. Yeah. And speaking of power, season four compared to season five, you, you've you got a lot more power. Do you approach the character the same way as you did in season four? Yes, the way it was... I mean, season uh, five? Season, uh, season six, six, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, when I first came on, uh, that was, speaking with Gary Lennon, because um, he was there my first day, and we really discussed where, where this character was going. He was a, a big realtor. He's a big money guy from day one. He always had this money, always had this power. Yeah. But he's just expanding. So he wanted, he had his Serbs already in New York, but he wanted to expand that on that. 
you know, all these guys that are in these power positions, so to speak, <laughs> they all want to get bigger and bigger and bigger right. and when everything's going well. So um, I don't think – I just think he's more invested in New York now with Ghost and Tommy because he, he sees some potential. that He want, he wouldn't do – Jason wouldn't do anything if he didn't see there was going to be a big uh, monetary value to it. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Kwame uh, MB in the live chat, he says, Jason wants to control Tommy more because he knows Tommy is easier to control than Ghost. Is yeah. there truth to that? Mm-hmm. Somewhat, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I really believe that Jason – Jason really likes Tommy. Mm-hmm. He's got a, a fondness for him. Maybe he sees a bit of himself in in in, uh, in Tommy, but uh, with Ghost, he didn't like him. But now Ghost is showing that he's realizing, wow, Ghost knows what he's doing yeah. as well, right? I also I also think because uh, two maybe two episodes ago when he uh, when you confronted him when you came to I'm sorry when your character confronted mm-hmm. Ghost to the club and he basically was like, kill me, what you gonna do? Like I'm not doing it. So I felt like Jason, I, I feel like a person of, of Jason's character always respects the one who stands up to them. Versus the versus the one who they can bully, and I feel like he now respects Ghost more than he does Tommy, and that he uses Tommy kind of as his pawn. He, he might. It, it's a tricky relationship, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, don't forget, also he knows all about Tommy and what Tommy's capable of as yeah. well. And the thing I, I believe with Jason is that he thinks Tommy's a bit of a loose cannon, which Tommy is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why he sort of feels on an equal level with with Ghost, and mm-hmm. feels like he can relate with him maybe a little bit better. But he's got a fondness for Tommy, so that's where the relationship gets really tricky here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So really quickly, so we're gonna move forward and come back again. So uh, Ghost gets uh, Dre and Alphonse to work together to push the drugs and return, um, and return to get close to pro- potentially be a, a distributor, distro, yeah. a distro for J- uh, for Jason. So now we have Tommy and Two Bit Spanky and Black Grimace. And so did Two Bit Spanky have a right to not want to work for free? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. You're ta- you're risking your freedom. <clears throat> you're risking your life. I don't know what you have going on. You don't want to let me in. Pay me my money, man. Okay, so do you guys notice how uh, how how like grip uh, black grimace and two bit are really Clashing. really? I mean, yeah. I feel like something Humping is about to pop ass. off with yeah, them. Just, yeah, <laughs> no, but shout out to uh, to Spanky. He is just hilarious. I mean, I love the comedic relief that he always brings. And then mm-hmm. we learned, I guess, when uh, what was that? A uh, two episodes, three episodes ago, mm-hmm. when. Um, Black Grimace, a- Avery, yeah. Avery, when uh-huh. he came in or when he uh, skyped in, that um, the, uh, there's a lot of like uh, what do you call it? improv and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I don't know how much of that was improvisation, but it was pretty good. I'm gonna disagree. I do understand uh, Two Bit, and I do understand their perspective. But what annoys me about this, it was it was cute in the beginning, you know, the the, the banter, but now all of this freaking comic relief, Tommy is not his character is not happy with all of this banter so it's like sometimes shut the f up and do what you're asked when you are in this time i'm sorry but when you're you you know this is not you're not this is not fortune 500 where you have health benefits and so forth <laughs> your life is on danger at all times and exactly being, why and, they should get their money up but, front but but the type of but the type of guy tommy is like like um like black grimace says pay me later tommy's good for it. tommy's gonna look out for them so it would not have killed them to shut the fuck up Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> I will say the uh, banter has been very repetitive that I did notice. Yeah, and you don't like it. It's yeah, uh, it's starting to wear. It's still funny because I like to always laugh, of course. Yeah. But as far as your point about working, they're in that business to make money. So I'm not gonna lift it was, a finger unless was, I know I'm gonna get my bag. It was 24 hours. And I, I, I gotta disagree. Okay. I, I disagree because um, I get it. I understand the dynamics between everybody. Tommy is the head honcho and all of that and he's got his workers. But at the same time, that's what this is. I mean, this is a team. This is, you know, um, it's sort of like they put their their lives on the line at times. You know what I'm saying? So it is. I understood when uh, BG, as they call him, yeah. where he he was like, you know what, I'll, I'll do it. Just give me later. Like, I get that type mm-hmm. of, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be mm-hmm. like, right? Yeah. For him and Tommy, I feel like they have a different sort of relationship where Spanky and Tubit are newer to the crew, and they've seen a lot of things change up in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Also, as far as the joking, I do think it's wearing a little thin, but I will say, what else are street guys gonna do when mm-hmm. they're gathering together? They're not looking at stock tips. They're gonna crack on each other. So. And it does remind me, like, <laughs> when I'm just kicking in with my boys, we just joke on each other, you that's know? So what, that's that's the point. That's, that's the is. point. That's why I like 
like it. I mean, it, whether it's wearing thin or not, that's why I like it. That's yeah. who he is. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. part of his character. So, yeah. I mean, it comes out and I enjoy it. There was a very Im important line, though, that I think we do have to address. Um, that's where they did mention you need proof of life mm -hmm. concept. Because later on in the episode, we do see how crucial that is. And I have a confession. I actually don't agree. I just wanted to get y'all started. <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> Man, you petty. So, um... There was the, um, um, Bl um, Sergeant D uh, Blanca Barricas. She has a new friend, uh, Detective McCall. I just really quickly, <laughs> what's your opinion? Do you like her or not? Detective McCall did what she needed to do. She sowed sympathy to Tariq when he ran that lie. You know, you could see it all in her face. As a black woman, she related to the story he spun. That's all she's there for. Okay, so it's so, so. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. you're good. So after it's introduced, uh, after they pull James over, basically they're looking for Tariq. So now let's go to Ghost Tommy, Tasha, LaKeisha. Ghost enters. Keisha says, well, you know, she says, please, what do you want me to say to him, Tommy? Uh, this is the same MF who shot your car and thought he killed you notice the look uh notice the look over to ghost that time he gave and now i'm supposed to shut up so um what's your take on lakeisha and her popping off at the mouth and speaking to ghost um just just give me one real yeah, quick. go ahead just, go ahead. just give me go one. ahead to take it just like we spoke <laughs> earlier lakeisha's so emotional <laughs> your face okay? like Jimmy. come on calm down did y'all notice <laughs> Later in the episode, when the cops were about to come through the uh, daycare, she got so emotional and scared. Oh my gosh, the cops! It's like calm down, right? So um, I, I, I just think she really needs to control all that. And the extra two bit about her talking to Ghost and I don't, I don't mess with y'all, blah blah blah. Relax. <laughs> Let's get the job done. Let's take care of all that after. What was your take on when Tasha comes in? completely pissed about not knowing uh, Tariq was kidnapped mm -hmm. and then um, and then she offers she it's so funny to see how the spark in Tasha's eyes when she found out that Ghost is back selling drugs <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drag her I'm not gonna drag her this week but just the look just the look on her face but what happens is she offers to um, she offers to wash help clean money. up to wash the money mm -hmm. and Keisha has the nerve to step in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. say no yeah so here's the thing Y'all let me know what you think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lakeisha is really not about that life. No. Right? She, clearly. She's not about that life. I think she just wants to take her Tommy. She wants to take her cash. And, and run she away. wants to run away. Yeah. However, I mean, she loves Tommy, but he's reeling her in. You know, she but she'll do whatever she needs to do. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that she's not about that life. And that I think that's where this whole... Um, anger you know it's like them ghost and tasha they're causing all of these issues and they're causing us not to be able to run you know to this to this life that we need and that's mm -hmm. kind of where it's coming from mm -hmm. i think that she is out of place because she doesn't really belong there that's not really what she does so i was wondering how did tasha know that they were all at tommy's spot i know i'm nit picking here but you know um well remember ghost doesn't have a place to stay so okay. she went to probably went to Tommy to to that's but a damn she, good question. I don't but know. But she came through <laughs> Mike, the Mike, door. Do you, do you do you looking for a ghost? Yeah, she sure did. Do you have what do you think? Um that is a really good question. I she would have talked to Tariq. Tariq may have had some insight as well. Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't, t at that he point, she didn't talk to she Tariq. Didn't yeah. She was kidnapping. You know what, though? But because Vincent told her that Ghost That's and right. Tommy were in on this, so she probably <clears throat> knew to go to Tommy, you yeah. know. Um, even if she even wasn't if she looking did, for Ghost. Even if she didn't run into Ghost, she was going to with Tommy. Yeah, probably, right? Yeah. yeah. Continuing, so with, uh, now, they were in the daycare, and Tasha's watching Keisha do the books. So Keisha's doing the books wrong. Okay, so she's not putting a certain amount of, you know, so she's not doing what she's doing. And then Zig stops in to collect the money. And now Keisha wants to talk and have conversations so like, like, like their best irritates friends. Me. Like the, yeah, Everything like, huh? about that irritates me. So why is she asking questions? And then why is Tasha answering the questions like they're not friends anymore? By because the way, Tasha Mike, doesn't have anyone to talk oh, to. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead go I ahead. just think that's part of, of every once in a while when friends, you know, break up, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they might have a drink or something will happen and next thing you know, within five minutes they're talking as if everything, they hadn't left each other. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's part of that. I think that's what they're yeah. trying to show. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to know so badly, and I don't even know if you're going to answer this or not. <laughs> as a viewer, as a fan of the show, because I'm sure you watch 
Are you Team Tasha or Team Lakeisha? <laughs> we got to know. Who I got to know. Down We're with asking Mike? the hard question. <laughs> oh, man, I can't answer that. I know. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, I knew it. On. Okay, but it's all good. It's all yeah. good. I know you got to go. <laughs> I can't answer that. Are you Team Ghost or Team Tommy? <laughs> nice, Jimmy. Nice. That's a good year. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know. I almost, I almost said something. <laughs> <laughs> almost, but it's not all good. Yet. Yeah. It's okay. all good. Okay. Yeah. okay, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, Tasha and Lakeisha go to the strip club, and uh, Epiphany's running. Sh- I didn't even recognize her. Well, it was. Oh, dark you didn't recognize it. Epiphany. I didn't. You know, she had a new wig. I just. <laughs> I mean, yeah. is she going to look the same picking her child up from daycare that she does when she's going to? Do she her looked better at the at strip night. club than she did coming <laughs> to the uh, to As the daycare with that. Because she's she doesn't get paid for coming to pick up her child from daycare. That's not based on how attractive she is at the moment. <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> Never mind. By the we, way, we Bam, have, yes. you got a lot of heat for talking about Epiphany last week. You I mean, did. It, it, save yourself, Bam. <laughs> Is, is, is Epiphany, I mean, does she she look better, right? I, I mean, you still not going to say nothing to she, redeem she, you? Are you still against the character? <laughs> um, Save yourself. Am I still against the character? <laughs> it, you know, it was better, you know, um, like I said. I just, the way that she presented herself at the daycare. Also, too, it for me, the way they presented her and the way she was in the scene now, I didn't know she was one of the top girls calling all the shots at the club. I thought she was just one of the workers just barely getting by. So then why are you so broke? Yeah, right. Sure. If, if you're calling the shots and you're having okay. all the dancers okay. do all these moves. Okay. Okay. She's had enough. Give me the No, 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 not that. <laughs> one, let's not, the strip club culture, if you know any strip, just because you might get $1,000 in one night, the next night you might get 200 So I that, it's yeah. up and down. So why is she broke? It could have been a slow week. You know? But in, in addition to that, I mean, she is now in a position where she's selling drugs. Exactly. Right? So yeah. she has these a way. girls in a position where she's like, we can all get, get more money. money. And so yeah. that's why it, I think she was shown in that light too, mm-hmm. you know? Because okay. it's a it's it's a community get business. Get your money, Epiphany. Yeah. Get your money, girl. It's a yeah. community business, <laughs> you know, and she's putting her coworkers and friends on so everybody makes money together. That's how you uplift a community. That's, <laughs> right. That's how you uplift the community. Yeah. I Happy didn't family. say the Happy family, family, yeah. you know, of what they're doing. I said the concept okay. is how you uplift All right, the community. Okay, so we see this montage of everybody is selling the drugs. Yeah. Yes, um, which, what was the background song? Dope Boy? Dope yeah. Man. Dope, dope yeah. Man, dope yeah. Boy. Oh, that was so good. Um, it was cool. I just I thought it was a cool montage. Yeah, I, like I thought um, so too. I thought it was a cool montage up until um, up until Dre just goes and stabs uh, the boy. What's uh, up, the, Dre? Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I had, what's up with that, Dre? Yeah. It wouldn't. It would not go down like that. It wouldn't go down. And then well, what made me it mad. It looked too smooth. He, it looked he, too... Well, let's... I mean, I understand. Okay, we have to shoot for the shot. We have to understand what Dre was doing. So he had to pull the, the switchblade out ahead of time so we knew what was up. Yeah. But the dude is looking at Dre like mm-hmm. this. Oh, you about to? Are oh, you about to stab me? Oh, and like, speaking you know of the mean? dude, like, actually, I did want to. And then the to, corners um, burnt because if you stab somebody on the corner, can you go back there and sell right. drugs anymore? Now, I don't now it's so. hot, right? Now yeah. the now the block is hot. But um, <laughs> real quick, the dude that did get stabbed, he looked very familiar. Uh, his name is T.J. Adams. He he actually plays O.D.B. on Wu Tang City. Oh, okay. Now. So okay. I was like. Moving on up in the game, I see you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and just just a, um and a, a quick thing in the montage uh, when Tasha was writing the book, she wrote the name Kimberly Jones. That's Little Kim, and she played Little Kim in Notorious. So I just thought that was cool that oh, she wrote the name. Right. Uh, Even after Little Kim was mean to her, but he loved super super Kim. mean. Ghost I, know. I did hear yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, I, like um, she didn't like how she like depicted her and stuff. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's go back to the drop off. So they get the two million dollars. Okay, they get the two million dollars, and now they're they're getting ready to do the drop off to uh, to Vince. And who comes swooping up? Whoa, 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 but but whoa, before whoa, that, before <laughs> that, we have yes. to go into the conversation. The relationship so, moment. Oh, that's, so, yeah, that's a great moment. That's so, yeah. um, what are we? So he said he <laughs> says he asked he asked who's um who's um. Uh, truck that he copped. He said it was Grams. He said some asshole told on my car. Ghost gives him kind of like that big brother look and then he decides to ask, what are we doing, Tommy? Do you think we should talk about it? What happens once we get to read? Tommy says, we don't need to talk about it. I know the answer. He was like, okay, you want to enlighten me, Ghost says. And then Tommy says, don't play innocent. Are you packing? And then uh, they're going to deliver the money to Penton, uh, Vinton, pick up the kid and do what we do. Do you feel like at that moment that that was the time where they should have had the conversation? Or do you think that um, 
do you think at this point Tommy should just not trust Ghost and just keep doing what he's doing? I think it was a good time to have the conversation because I think they need to actually know, you know, what goes down after that. Um, I, I think the vibe of the conversation was pretty funny to me, not, not to make a joke out of it, but it was like, if you, it's like one of those conversations, you're kind of messing with a girl and she's like, so, you know, where what are we exactly, you know? Mm -hmm. I felt like it was like one of those type of conversations, but it did need to actually go down. It definitely felt like a relationship conversation, uh, you know, a yeah, couple. But they're like they're like brothers, right? Yeah, right. Right. brothers. Robin and, and you know, and, and sometimes guys have a hard time uh, expressing, expressing themselves. themselves. Mm -hmm. All right, bro. I've heard. Well, what are we know, doing out here, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what it is, and I think finally, Ghost is trying to get through to Tommy and saying, just trying to figure it out, and, mm. and I think Tommy realizes that maybe it's past that point. I don't know. But it seems like that's the way I felt it in the car. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I still love you, but it's done. Yeah, what bothers me, I think, which has always bothered me, is the fact that there's so much that there's so much that they haven't said to one another. It's like if they cleared up so much, if they just sat and had a, you know, a whole day where they were like, well, this happened. This is actually what happened. You thought this, but this is what happened. You know, so much could be cleared up. But um, to me, that was them talking. You know, th there was they left with a mutual understanding, it felt like. And I do feel like Ghost wants this a little bit more. He wants to, you know, he's the one who brought up the conversation. He said, man, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think he wants to squash it a little bit more. But like, uh, like Mike was saying, you know, uh, Tommy, I think, maybe feels like, okay, well, what, what can we do from here? And a couple of episodes ago, remember Ghost called Tommy and said, we should come together. Jason mm -hmm. is playing us both, mm -hmm. and we should get together and kill Jason. So, I, you know, <laughs> they're trying mm -hmm. as best they can to communicate. Mm -hmm. I, I, felt, uh, I felt Tommy was playing the spoiled little brother, and Ghost was trying to, you know, be the adult or the older brother yeah. and try to, you know, ration with him, and Tommy was kind of, you know, pouting. Speaking of pouting, so once... The Jason and his crew pulls up. Jason, to me, was in a pouty way. He says, I can't believe you two are working together again. I can't yeah. fucking believe. Um, <laughs> and, I, I, and I said to myself, okay, this is a moment where I actually don't like the Jason character anymore. Because at this point, now I'm now Jill, now let's rock together. Um, Jason, it's it's more than just a control thing. Now it's something else. It's it's weird that he's so invested into th these two people. And if he if he knows so much about the history, does he not know that Ghost and Tommy kill all their distro head distros? I mean, they take everybody. It's just there's something weird about Jason in that scene. He was very. Um, you I think and, and I have a oh, well I just I have a question too because Jason got the million dollars for the other things but he's still no further in the knowledge of what they needed the money for I mean what they need the drugs for to begin with and where they're going so that's why I was just kind of like um it might be something deeper there because he still didn't get the information yeah. at least to what we saw yeah he didn't get the information but the fact it's one of those things that it always irks him that they work together and the reason being it's not that uh, he just doesn't like ghosts he doesn't like them together because they're powerful together ah uh, okay right if you think about it that way he knows if they're together in cahoots and everything's going well it's tougher for Jason to take over he's got to break these guys down try mm. to break them down mm. they did right. take out one of his best guys yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and and I think at the end of the end look he, he does have a lot to lose because if, if these guys screw around and make mistakes his whole empire takes a big hit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, if all the distros all these guys and if Tommy gets killed or Ghost gets killed it's going to take time to get other people in there he doesn't want to kill them right now he wants to make money he's mm -hmm. a businessman he really wants to get his money but there's going to be a point where you know where it goes a little too far or he gets angry and mm -hmm. that was one of the points where he got angry because he, he felt like he was lied to hmm. Hmm. Okay. okay um <laughs> after that they go to drop the money off to uh to vincent they only had a half a million dollars so vincent decides to get a bag of oranges and put them into a pillowcase and meet the shit out of Tariq. this isn't a gangster movie man right it says you, it says don't get that line well, yeah, okay. yeah. 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 perfect yeah. definitely heard, i heard that line um 
were you were you happy that Tariq finally got some kind of you yes know? yes <laughs> you are in over your head yes I saw that Lesson commentary learned. that yep. said Tariq got the beating that he is deserved yeah, I'm sure you know? yeah. he looked shocked like wait well <clears throat> up until that point he thought he was in Running control, control. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. come to find out nah you're slipping brother yeah, so, yeah. yeah. but you know this whole well obviously the show is all about power but I felt like in this uh, in this specific episode everything was about power you know you had the Jason character where he felt when, when Tommy when he asked Tommy that question and he knew that Tommy was lying he was like okay I got you I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, everything's okay. Cool. Then Wayne grabbed his money. So, like, as far as Jason is but concerned, only half. Well, half. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. but as he <laughs> as he says, uh, your character said something like, you know, this million dollars is for like your debt is cleared for the week or the months. Like, like your debt yeah. is cleared up to present. So I felt like that was his power position. So he won in that in that instance, mm-hmm. and then Vincent won over Tariq in that yes. instance. However. Yeah. Go ahead. Jim. Oh, I was just gonna give another example. Um, there was a conversation between Ghost Tay and Ram- Ramona yeah. earlier in the episode, and that was another uh, struggle of power there. And yeah. then uh, Ghost w- won that that one as well. Yeah. So uh, what I've noticed throughout all seasons is um, Ghost is supposed to be that guy, right? Ghost is always in control. James, you know, whomever, whoever steps up, whatever, whatever guy steps up, if it's whatever Ghost iteration, or James, or however he's Jamie, feeling, yeah, however that he's day. feeling. But he's always, uh, he's always sort of in power. And even if temporarily he loses that power, he knows what to do to get back on top. And since we are looking at Tariq or I, you know, so many people have called him, you know, Ghost 2.0 or whatever. Since we're looking at that, and though it may look like he has lost power, and temporarily Mm -hmm. he has, there is, because he's a little ghost, I feel like, and I don't know what's coming up. I mean, we'll get to our predictions and everything, but I feel like there's gonna be how how does a person remain in power and never have never fall unless somebody comes to challenge that and they show you why they're in power Mm -hmm. i think that's sort of what we're gonna see from Tariq. he's gonna Mm -hmm. yeah you may have lost this one right now but i'm gonna figure out a way to come back on top Mm -hmm. i think that that's coming what are your thoughts um so um they need more product so they need more product because um they already got yeah, yeah. They so so yeah. so they're missing. Can't one. ask Jason yeah. for some more. So okay, so they need a million dollars, and so now Keisha spills about Tasha's connect. What's your thoughts on um, Ghost upset and, and says basically that Tasha's foul? What, what, what the fuck, Tasha? <laughs> Ghost needs to mind his business. That's once again the control issue. You don't want to be with this woman. You're not giving her any money. Why are you bothered by what she's doing? Because, as Black Grimace so uh, uh, eloquently put it, he says that with the drug money that they got from Zig, it was only forty five thousand dollars, and and that he and the line that he said was, um, he said, hold on one second, he said that um, yeah, that, it, that, it, that it had it had two stars on <laughs> Yelp, yeah. and that the product was not yeah. good. If you notice, Tasha even warned uh, Zig about Tommy. The reason that. Tasha was fouled in this instance because Tommy and Ghost does need to vet and make sure that this guy is legit. I, she well, he is legit. His product was just low quality. And, and but this, Tasha but, didn't know that. But she didn't know that. But here's the thing: she didn't care because it's in the streets and they were still moving it. That's not impacting her, and it really didn't impact Ghost and them until they needed to re up. They wouldn't have been using Tasha's Connect otherwise. No, but I still feel like the fact that she is doing this all by herself. So she should have ran it by Ghost? Who doesn't even want her to come upstairs in the penthouse? Why? Yeah, when it, why? You, sound, you sound, by the way, like Ghost. And let me tell you, you sound, why. Yeah. Let me tell you why. That's because cool. Ghost has a thing about him that almost wants to put Tasha in her place. He wants her to stay there. He's like, you should be happy with what you have. You should be happy with the lifestyle and does not want her to do anything outside of him. So everything, he turns everything on her. Anything that is not in the line of Ghost and things that he think is right, he always turns on Tasha. Think and about she that. Does think it, and about she the does fact, it too. It's a power struggle between the two of them. So it may be. But right yeah. now we are talking about Ghost mm-hmm. and Tasha. We're talking about him on her and the fact that he always has this tendency to say if something does, if he doesn't like something, it's your fault. It's why did you do this? How come you didn't come to me? Like he needs to pull that power play all the time. 
So yes, you do sound like ghosts. <laughs> that's, <laughs> ghosts that's, 3.0 over here. That, uh, <laughs> that, is, that is quite fine, and I'm going to keep moving on. Yes, um, yes. So, um, fundraiser. Uh, so the fundraiser. So they don't got the money, so they got they need another option. But hey, Lakeisha came in handy, right? Lakeisha mm. said, "Listen, why? Uh, you know, it would it would if something happens to Tariq, you guys aren't thinking about that." So it gave them the bright idea to a twofold plan, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. So they go and uh, they go and kidnap um, Vincent's guy. Vincent's guy, I forget yeah. his name. Um, they they go and they get him and mm-hmm. they hold him as ransom. And so now they come up with this thing basically to rob. Um, the the fun fundraiser, fundraiser at, at Truth, Truth. Yeah. Um, which I, I really liked. So, um, uh, there we go. Rashad asked James, how did he get the money back and goes to look surprised? How did the money? I was confused. I was also confused. How they did never I, establish that. Yeah, how was the money? Do you know, I, Mike? I don't, Okay. to be honest. Oh, so that's okay. something we can look forward we'll to. find out. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lots so, of Easter eggs. We love them. So, he gives uh so james gives him the drive with alphonse then dre brings a uh, product to alphonse then says that he's going to get paid either way dre questions then snoops around he sees two bit and spanky um and then so did dre so did dre leave because two bit saw him and he didn't want to be killed he didn't know I, he just knew something was up yeah he saw him. i was very confused yeah. well I, my opinion is that he he's working for the feds but he hasn't come across dre etc and um, two bit Dre hasn't come across two bit and Spanky, so he doesn't know what they know that he's on board with James, any of that stuff. So to him, he's thinking I could get caught up in something. So Do you I'm guys think leave. that Ghost should have told Dre what was going on? No. No. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. No. no. But um, so I, I think that's it. So he got out of there. So the good thing though is that Dre doesn't know whether. It was a setup or a setup. He doesn't know who the setup came from, mm-hmm. yeah. even if he knows, because he's still dangerous. And I and I do agree that it was good that he was that he was out out of there and, and what you know. So Alphonse now was selling drugs to security guard. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand that. I was confused. I was confused as well. Well, he did say, "I'm gonna get my money no matter Regardless, what." So yeah. maybe that's what he was referring to. Mm-hmm. He could still get mm-hmm. money, get more money, mm-hmm. and then get more money. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. okay. So what was you guys' take on the whole shaman? The whole thing. I mean, it was a fun caper heist, you know? It was like, I felt like, oh, we're getting a little Ocean's Eleven in the middle of power. I, yeah, no, that was, it was fun. It was really fun, but I do think that they should have had someone else. I mean, I understand for the storyline that Alphonse needed to die in this episode, but I think they should have had, like, someone who's never come in contact with uh, Councilman Tate as the front man. Wouldn't that, would have made much more sense? And then Alphonse de- definitely pissed me off, because they could have oh, gotten yeah. out of there. He was Bro, doing, what you doing? doing? Yeah, 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 I, I actually, you from somewhere? I what do you? What does that matter? <laughs> Get out of there! Right. This ain't the time. This, this ain't, ain't the, the time. time. You, you know gonna right. spark up a conversation yeah. during the robbery? It was. It was almost <laughs> like his weed was laced, or something. Uh, yeah. I wasn't mad yeah. that. Um, Councilman Tate recognized Alphonse because I also think that even though he knows that that's James's guy now, it still leaves a layer of, well, maybe this is a stick up kid from the hood. Maybe just, you know, just all types of things that could have played into it, but it turned out well for everybody. So, do you think that, well, obviously, Ghost wanted um, uh, Rashad Tate to be, the, th- to be the hero. Do you think that Ghost set this up just to kill Alphonse? No. That's a great question. Ghost. I don't think so. Mike, what do you think? I don't think so. Too many things go wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for him to. But that's a great way to put it, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I thought Alphonse went off script and James gave the gun to Tate. I didn't think that he even thought that Tate was going to have to use it. I thought yeah. that he was thinking that he was going to talk to him like, I'm talking to a perp, but I'm talking to you, mm-hmm. you know, so that maybe it clicks in far. like into his high. Yeah. But um, it didn't. And mm-hmm. we found out a lot of backstory about Tate in this episode that yeah. it I was, just was a, a cop. Yeah. about to mention, yeah. yeah. He was a, a cop, so <laughs> I think that's why Ghost even passed the gun off to him because he knew if somebody has to shoot him why not make it take who is a former cop so he knows he's going to hit his mark yeah. and and could possibly be caring good. right and don't forget right ghost is always on point he's thinking one step ahead of everybody else he's really good in a bad situation he mm-hmm. figures out how to get out of it right <clears throat> And so I think that's exactly what happened. I think he said, oh, an opportunity just came up. If I give him the gun, 
oh, if he does shoot him or if he does talk him down, either way he wins. Yeah. And yeah. Tate looks like the hero. And Tate looks like and the that, hero. that's exactly what Ghost wanted. Yeah. I, th- I like that part. I just thought that um, it was a waste of a murder for Alphonse. Like, just, mm-hmm. it was... It was a waste. They could have used that to kill Tate or like a bigger character. <laughs> you just I don't really want Tate. I don't see a reason for Tate to die. I don't know why you're pushing for that for so much. Having a governor in somebody's pocket seems to be a pretty valuable chess piece on the board. That's a good card, mm-hmm. right? You right. know. Shout out to uh, Tasha. James, please give it to him. <laughs> and I, shout I thought, out to I Ramona because she funny. peeped game. She I did. liked when they yeah. were when he was being interviewed and she peeped game. I'm not sure if she thinks. I know she believes that Ghost is involved and possibly set it up. Not sure she thinks they're together, but mm-hmm. I like that she's peeping what's going on, and she might be another one that is um, getting sucked in by, well, we know she's sucked in with James's charm, but mm-hmm. getting caught up in, he has a plan. I'm going to mm-hmm. follow this man just Speaking, like Angela. Oh. Super quickly, mm-hmm. you guys still don't think that Ramona and Tate had something going on? No. Okay. All right, I'm gonna leave it alone. I, I still think alone. Tate is trying to holler, but I think Ghost is in the way of that. Oh, okay, so you yeah. think he's trying to? Okay, I think yeah. I, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I recognize yeah. game. Uh-huh. But, right. but speaking of peeping game, you have to give it to Blanca Rodriguez because always. her, she's always on it. So when, um, so when Ghost and Tasha, you know, uh, call Vincent to set up so that Tariq can go and speak to the police, uh, Tasha brings them over and Blanca, every time Tasha makes a move that we know is to be false, Blanca's, game. Blanca's right there. So really quick, what's your take on Tariq lying wow. to, uh, to Detective McCall and, uh, and Blanca Rodriguez about the murder Tariq is ghost. Tariq, so is, I was, I, Tariq I, is like ghost. Ahead. I mean, he knows what to do. How? I mean, look how fast he came up with this absurd yeah. story, you know, to get himself out of it. But will it come back on him is the question. I right. just said he is such a great actor, you know, because he made me believe, I'm so tired of all these k- killings. I'm like, oh, let him go. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, like, it's one of those things that he, it was dope. It was dope. And so the return of Tariq, so... Um, so when they went to return Tariq um, early in the episode, um, uh, t- uh, Ghost goes and speaks with uh, Cousin Benny and lets him know that he was possibly murdered by Igor. Proctor, uh, um, Proctor was uh, murdered by Igor because yeah. he was going to testify against him in a... Um, Sex trafficking. Sex trafficking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he then, uh, Benny was like, if you need a favor, I got you. So then he shows up and he saves. Um, got you. Yeah, he basically lets, uh, he goes up to Vincent and says, hey, listen, so like if you got your money, this is it. You you do anything else, basically I'll kill you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, shout out again to Dominic yeah. Lombardozzi. Like he, he and his team pulled up like a boss, right. like bosses. I mean, I just <laughs> yeah. love anytime mm-hmm. something like that is involved. I'm like, yes, go. I just love Almost like thing. Jason style. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's really quick. Dominic's yeah, great. Yeah. I love Dominic. Really quick on that scene, since we're kind of jump ahead because yeah. we're pressed for time. Mm-hmm. Um, the conversation when Dominic says, you know, that they're protected for life, um, I mean, I'm Dominic. I'm sorry. When Benny says mm-hmm. that um, Ghost and Tariq are protected for life because they held it down, I feel like Ghost is the only one that didn't know what was going on there. Like, to me, it was clear Benny knows that it was Tommy that mm-hmm. killed Proctor. Tommy mm-hmm. now knows, that, okay, Benny knows I killed Proctor. Only Ghost was like, wait, how does starting Benny, to put things together. How does so Benny you think know? Benny knows? I, I think Benny know. knows because of the conversation he had with Proctor before he went to Ghost's house. He said he was thinking about turning on Tommy. He Ooh. also mentioned the, yeah. um, mm. that he was scared of Tommy, that Tommy kind of intimidated him. Benny wanted to get involved. He said no. I don't want you to go to jail. He could have gone to the family, mm-hmm. but he wanted, you know, he's been distancing dist- distancing, distancing uh-huh. himself from that for quite some time in order to, you know, make his law career somewhat legit. So I feel like Benny knows. I feel like That's the other information point. was yeah. good, but I feel like Benny knows. Yeah, and also um, the fact that Tariq is the one who dropped off um Elisa, Elisa Marie. Marie. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's a tie. I mean, he sees that Tariq is close with Tommy, obviously, and and, and even in that scene, like, I think you're right about that, like him putting uh, two and two together. But I still think he might kill Tommy. Anyway, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Final thing before we ask some questions about you. So, um, so Ghost and Tasha know about what uh, Tariq did and how he set it up, and mm-hmm. so now you see that Tommy. Uh, that now that now you start to see that that Ghost and Tasha. Are possibly now going to be the duo because now they know what Tariq did. Mm-hmm. Just any comments? 
Mm. As okay. it should be. <laughs> okay, so so moving forward, so Mike. Okay, so Mike, how'd you get this role? <laughs> um, old school way. Mm-hmm. I, I auditioned for it, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and uh, I was doing a play in Ottawa, actually, in in Ontario, in Canada, and uh, I got the call while I was there, and my play was finishing on a Thursday night, and uh, and then I had to fly on Friday, and I started Monday. Wow. Yeah. Do you know if the fact that you, you speak multiple languages, did that help you land the role? I, I think so. I, I would imagine so. Um, Which is, f- for the viewers, French and... French and Serbian. Serbian. And English. And English, right. Mm-hmm. And so when you auditioned, um, were you a fan of Power? Or were you watching? I had watched a couple episodes. I just found out about Power because... Um, when I'm up in Canada, I, I wasn't able to see it. We couldn't, <clears throat> we couldn't get it, and then somebody had told me about it, and I watched some of it on iTunes, and then I had read a character breakdown before an agent, uh, my agent was trying to get me in for it. He goes, like the show Power, take, take a look at it, and I said, oh, okay, mm-hmm. I like this show. Now Which is had, great, right? You yeah. had a really yeah. uh, uh, extensive background in being a stuntman, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. So dope. Okay. I'm curious. Are we going to see any of your stunts? <laughs> are, are, are you going to pull anything out for power? I don't know. Mm. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of what. There might be something, but I don't know. They okay. don't really. You know, it's funny because nobody really knows that unless you research my stuff mm-hmm. that I've done that or. Uh, Which two? Uh, right. You've been set on fire. Mm-hmm. You've been hit by a car. You've been thrown <laughs> off buildings, <laughs> thrown through w- windows. So, uh, do you enjoy the stunt stuff more than the acting side, or no, which one? No, I mean, like more? no, 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 the acting side. I always wanted to be an actor, and uh, when my sports career was done in early retirement, um, <laughs> Let, tell them what sport. Yeah, tell I, them. I played. Right. I, I played hockey and football. Uh, played hockey in the, in the East Coast Hockey League, which is a farm system for the Chicago Blackhawks. Mm-hmm. Uh, played for the Columbus Chill, and then I also played football in the Canadian Football League. But I played at Southern Illinois University. I'm a Saluki. Receiver. Saluki. There you go. What position? Receiver. Running back. Running back. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Power yeah. through. <laughs> I was. It's true. It's funny because being from Montreal, it, it didn't matter to me. But everybody would always tell me, you're the only white guy in the conference. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> it just didn't dawn on me, you know, coming from Canada. But Right, right. Um, yeah, and, and the career went okay and cut short a couple of knee injuries and that. But uh, I still find it successful. And, and I always wanted to be an actor. I did the corporate world. But then I started delving into acting. And and because of my background, you know, my physicality with pro sports, next thing you know, I bumped into some people that were like, have you ever thought about stunt work? Mm-hmm. And um, I said, love to. I just wanted to be in the film industry, whatever way to get in. Mm-hmm. You'll do it, yeah. And I was studying at the time, too, and I did a couple acting gigs, little small, you know, one-line roles here and there. And then uh, stunt-wise, my career took off quickly. Mm-hmm. I started working on all the big movies um, that were shooting up in Canada, and then I decided to move down here and make it a go of it down here. And then my acting career started taking off down here. So we, you have over two hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His, his resume is lit. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I mean, thanks. Yeah. yeah, The Predator, Deadpool Two, uh, SWAT. Yeah. Um, uh, X Men. I mean, yeah. there's, there's, <laughs> there's so on and yeah. on. Yeah, so he, You've worked with. Dwayne Johnson, mm-hmm. Jason Statham, Vin Diesel, Will Smith. Out of all those, who's been the who do you who did you have the best time working with? Oh, that's a hard question. Um, I'm lucky. I have to tell you something that uh, working with with all these guys, they've always been professional and great. Uh, the Rock was awesome. Uh, Jason Statham was awesome. I've done a couple of things with Jason. Uh, great respectful nice mm-hmm. Jason did something to me that was great uh, we were working on a movie called uh, In the Name of the King A Dungeon Siege Tale and I had a moment there where our our second unit director I don't care because I told him to his face so he was rushing me and I'm sitting there going this is the moment you guys are rushing and Jason being the number one lead of the show most guys wouldn't say anything <clears throat> he came up to me and says no you fight for it you don't let him take this is your hero moment he goes I guarantee you it'll be in the movie and so I said you know I'm taking my time I don't care and he yelled the director yelled got pissed off at me and I was like I don't care Nice. And guess what's in the movie? Nice. That there you go. So nice. I respect Jason for doing something like that because he didn't have to, and he's the number one. He doesn't want to take the you know the uh, the camera away from him, 
and that was a moment where he could have done that and he didn't wow. so, yeah. well we don't know what's going to happen obviously with with your character yeah. in power <laughs> according to bam you are going to be jason will be killed off we don't know yet <laughs> but uh after we know that this is the 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 final uh the you know the final season of power yes. but you must have some other things that you're working on because you're always working so what's what's to come for you well right now we're just looking at different things um to be honest with you, nothing lined up right now mm -hmm. at this moment, but that's another reason why I've got a bunch of meetings this week and I had nice. a great one last week, a couple great ones last week. And we're just, uh, my agents and my reps want me to focus on a couple other things. So mm -hmm. we're just uh, okay. waiting to see Yeah, that's what really comes exciting. up. Yeah. Um, as Robin mentioned to you, um, we have a live chat room. So we've had we had a, a bunch of people in there. Um, can you just give a shout out to the Power After Show live chat? Yeah, sure. Like now. Yeah, yeah. they're, 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 they're watching. watching. They're, they're watching, watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, thanks guys for watching Power After Show After After Buzz After Buzz, after Buzz TV. Yeah. Thanks guys. And there's been tons of comments like Flavor Flex on IG and a bunch of people had a bunch of questions and I'm sorry we weren't able to get to them, but uh, we had a lot to discuss. So, um, you know, thank you to everyone from the live chat who's DM'd us, who tweeted us, um, you know, having questions for Mike. So thank you so much. Uh, where can you be found on social media? Uh, you can find me at, at Dope and Mike on Twitter and on Instagram. And then one final thing. Yeah. What can you tell us? Power, After Buzz TV exclusive. What can we expect from <laughs> the rest of the season from Jason or Ghost or just tell us anything? <laughs> oh like, man, what, what can I, to not blow this. Um, right. But Jason and, and uh, Ghost and, and Tommy's relationship gets really interesting. Okay. 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 All right. Well, we're holding we'll on to it. that. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We appreciate you so much for taking the time to come in, sit with us. There are so many comments in here that says, yeah. I love Jason. Oh, so, I mean, oh, they're, they're obviously loving your character. We appreciate uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And Thanks then also, too, for the viewers, we did a <laughs> sit down segment with uh, the, the actor who played Alphonse. His, his name is Patrick Walker. That interview was put up on the AfterBuzz channel. If you want to go check that out, go do that. And if we could get him in the green screen room, maybe we can answer the questions the chat room asks, if you yeah. have time. Well, sure. Sure. That, will be, that will be great. So we don't have time to, to do all the our goodbyes. Yeah, so we just want to say thank you guys. Next week, we have another guest for you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. 